How's it going guys? My name is Graham and welcome to Two Left Thumbs. The other day the Jackbox Party Pack 4 came out on pretty much every device you can think of. We've had a ton of fun playing Jackbox games here in the past. I'm a big fan and we just played the new one here on the channel. We have individual videos for each of the six new games in the new Party Pack so you can check out either of those. But now that I've played every game I thought it would be a good idea to sit down and give uh, an overall review of what I thought of the Party Pack this year. So first off, we'll look at Fibbage 3. Same as past Fibbages. Basically, they just take a fact, they leave out a noun or something, just as a blank. Everyone comes up with their lies. You're trying to fool the people you're playing with. You get points for both guessing the correct answer and for fooling other people. Honestly, there's nothing different here other than the new, cool, like, 60s game show skin, which I really do like. And it's just nice to have new prompts to go off of if you're starting to see repeats in the old Fibbage games. The real improvement here is Enough About You. It's a great new addition where instead of random facts, it asks the people in the room to give their answers to a question, and then the other people in the room try and cloud that and muddy it up with their lies. Points are distributed the same way with fooling people and guessing correctly. It feels kind of like Fibbage meets the newlywed game, but instead of one-on-one, -on -one, there's like a room full of people. It kind of ensures that your experience will be different each time you play and with each new group of people you play with. In regular Fibbage, a fact is a fact that's not going to change, but a personal preference or opinion is going to change, and so that makes it pretty much endlessly replayable. In the final round, you just give one truth and one lie and people guess which one of them was the truth. It's a little open-ended, there's no guidance there, it allows for a lot of creativity, but some people give kind of cop-out answers when they can't think of something on the spot. Next up is the new game Survive the Internet. Everyone is given a random question or prompt that they have to give a short response to. I think it's limited to like 90 characters, it's like less than a tweet. And then your response, minus the original prompt, goes out to another player, and they have to fill in a new prompt to try and make you look a little bit silly. The game was advertised about, you know, making the best burns and making your friends look stupid, but really nobody's gonna be insulted. Same as Quiplash, it's kind of all just about getting the biggest laughs. One issue I had with it is that with those original prompts that everyone is answering, the game is kind of encouraging you to answer with what you feel a good setup will be rather than an honest answer. We found that if your answers were too honest, too specific to the original prompt, or too succinct, then the other person is just kind of stuck with nothing to work with. You could say the answer to that problem is just be funnier, be more creative, but then now and again you get stuck with something where there's literally nowhere funny to take it. It just feels a little deflating. And then in the final round everyone has a random picture, and then people are left adding captions to that picture to try and make you look stupid again. Really, you're not really targeting specific people, so it's kind of just about getting big laughs again. But I think this final round worked well and usually led to some pretty good laughs. The third game we tried was Civic Doodle, and this is honestly my favorite game from this year's party pack. The general group consensus was it's probably the best drawing game of any Jackbox, and we all kind of thought that it's possibly one of the best overall Jackbox games. The game feels a lot like Draw Something, where you could watch how the person originally drew their picture, that's going on live on screen for everyone to see, but with multiple people drawing at the same time. Allowing everyone to watch those head-to-head -head drawings resulted in very little downtime and everyone was super engaged. Adding on to someone else's drawing can feel a little bit restrictive, but if you don't have a real idea then you just kind of get weird with it and sometimes that had the best results. It didn't matter if you were a good or bad drawer because it was all about the funny ideas and the execution of those ideas. And then in the final round, everyone's attempting to follow a series of instructions, and that was just hilarious. Everyone's focused on their phone trying to do their absolute best drawing, and then you look up and see what everyone else came up with, and I think it's some of the biggest laughs I remember having at a Jackbox game. I really have no complaints about Civic Doodle, it's so fun. Next up is Bracketeering, and I think this is probably the weakest entry in this party pack, and for me it's right along Earwax as one of my least favorite of the last three party packs. Everyone's given a simple prompt that they give an answer to, and then two of those at a time go head to head just like a regular bracket. Everyone casts their votes on which they think should win, and if there's ever a tie then you play a short little tapping minigame to see which one wins. It suffers for the same reason TKO and Party Pack 3 did. The answers tend to win based on their initial shock value, so you'll have big 6-0 winners, but that also means it's less funny every time you see it. It may have had a big laugh in round 1, but by round 2 it's already old hat. So the logical solution there is to make a more honest, thoughtful answer rather than the big laugh answer. 
but the problem here is the thoughtful answer will always lose in the first round to the shock value answer. So with each subsequent round, everything becomes less funny, you realize it wasn't really that relevant for the question to begin with, and so the second and third rounds start to feel like a little bit of a grind. After the first set of brackets is complete and we move on to the second round of questions, they introduce blind brackets. For example, the one time we were asked to give any adjective that ends in Y. After the answers were submitted, the actual question was changed to the best name for a mobile dating app. So this led to some really hilarious and unexpected results, but then again, when you move on to the second set of brackets, it's just repetitive. The final round of bracketeering overall is a triple blind bracket. So everyone submits their initial answer, but then the questions being posed in each tier of the bracket is being changed every round, but the answers aren't. This honestly feels like it should have been the entire game, because then it's new, fresh, and exciting every time. You also have these funny moments where you think that something that you eliminated in the first round due to a different question would have actually been a better fit for the second round, but it's too late. It kept you guessing, it made you have to really think about things every time, and it kept the game fresh and exciting the whole way through. So bracketeering in my mind is kind of awful because those first two rounds are so slow and repetitive. If they add an option to play with blind brackets only, then this game would actually be a ton of fun. Last up is a new dating game, Monster Seeking Monster. And this is easily the strangest and probably most creative addition to this year's Jackbox and possibly ever. Everyone starts as a random monster disguised as a human and each individual monster has their own abilities. Each night you're exchanging text messages with other players in the game. At the end of each night, you're supposed to choose who you want to go on a date with. If you choose each other, you match, you go on a date, and you both earn hearts. Now the goal of the game is to accumulate the most hearts. But the real shakeup in this game is that everyone's hidden monster persona is going to have a special ability to either take away hearts from other players or to help them earn extra hearts in particular situations. For instance, the witch is best off if she never dates the same person twice whereas the serial killer actually does the best if they continue to date the same person. Now this game is set for a maximum of seven players, but there's somewhere around a dozen different monsters. And that's the real secret to this game, is you're not gonna know which monsters were a part of your group until the very end. So you might be strategically trying to avoid a serial killer or the vengeful ghost, but they were never in the round to begin with. I would compare Monster Seeking Monster to Bidiots, not in gameplay, but for the fact that I didn't appreciate it the first time I played it. Most Jackbox games like Fibbage, Quiplash, Drawful, they're all immediately fun because there's no learning curve. This game benefits from playing a few times to get the hang of things, learn the rules, and begin anticipating what monsters other players might be playing as. Everyone will be a little hesitant at first with the texting side of things. You can either choose to flirt or just be silly and try to connect with someone. And then it starts to become these isolated little games where you're trying to make each other laugh because making each other laugh is a good reason to match. So there's a bunch of isolated inside jokes happening at once and then they all get put on display on the main screen for everyone to laugh at and judge. That texting phase is so goofy, it's like a room full of people shooting each other winks. You're not sure if you're misreading someone's wink, whether you should wink back, Maybe you should wink at more than one person, but wait crap, did they just see that wink that you sent them? It's kind of a hilariously uncomfortable process. And then when you're choosing your date, you actually get kind of sweaty palms, feeling like you're actually asking someone out, are they going to match with you, are they going to reject you? You're really putting yourself out there, you're just trying to find love. It's a monster seeking monster, totally absurd, a little bit hard to get a grasp on, but once you've played it once or twice, I think you'll find it's actually one of the funnest games in the pack. So just for the sake of it, let's say that Fibbage 3 and the expansion are just considered one game, so there's five games. I would say three to four out of five of these are hits. I would tend to say three, because I think Surviving the Internet tended to be pretty weak. It was kind of 50-50 whether or not it actually gave good results, and the times that it didn't, were like really deflating and kind of just disappointing, I guess. But everyone I was playing with seemed to think it was a good game. They still all enjoyed it. So I, I hesitate to say that that one was a failure. Maybe I just personally wasn't that good at it. So I think that was still a decent game. Fibbage and its new edition is the best we've seen from Fibbage yet. Monster Seeking Monster was kind of like wonderfully weird. It was a lot of fun once you got used to it. And Civic Doodle is like one of the best Jackbox games period. So when that's all said and done, I think this is actually a really strong party pack. I came away from it the first day thinking, uh, there's there's a few duds, There's a, it's, it's not that great overall, bracketeering was 
kind of terrible. I really strongly dislike bracketeering. But then when I started thinking back on it, there's hits and misses in every one of the jackboxes. And when I was really tallying it up, this might actually be one of the stronger jackboxes. Which, again, is a reason why I wish these weren't individual games. I wish they were all considered expansions. So you just had to boot up one game file. And then at this point, by the fourth, and then with things like Drawful 2, you would have like 21, 22 games at your disposal in one game. I really dislike that when I'm in the middle of playing, all of a sudden I have to be like, ah, oh, let's play Trivia Murder Party, let's close everything, open it up, do one round of that. Oh, I really want to play Drawful 2, let's shut everything down and boot that back up. It's annoying. They should really just exist in one game file as little expansions. Maybe that's not viable, maybe that's a debate for a whole other time, but I think this was still a really strong jackbox. I've seen some complaints, but I think once you give the games a bit more of a chance, get used to them, familiarize yourself with the rules, I think it is still a lot of fun. I would totally recommend it. I can't give it like an out of 10 because I feel like I'm trying to put a number on five and a half different games and that's kind of awkward. So I will just say overall approved, maybe one of the better party packs, definitely worth checking out. I don't do a lot of reviews on the channel, that's kind of new to me. Let me know if this was helpful to you at all, do you agree with what I had to say, which one was your favorite or least favorite in the pack, which is your favorite party pack altogether? I'd love to hear from you guys, hit me up in the comments and we can talk about it. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.